Your Majesty, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor to be here. It's an honor to be invited to speak in the Stockholm Water Prize Laureate Seminar. And uh, I must congratulate the International Water uh, Management Institute for all the good work that they do. And, and part of that good work is awareness about water. And they, they have done, over the so many last years, an amazing job there of creating awareness about the issue of water. Um, Tony Allen, I just want to say, you know, um, they say also that um, a pessimist is a well-informed optimist. Um, but, um, and as you said, uh, uh, being in business, we have to be born optimists. So I'm an optimist optimist. And I do believe in what we're discussing today. There are, there are reasons for optimism. And I would say being here together talking about water is already a very, very good sign. You just have to think that 10 years ago, 10 years ago, we were not talking so much and intensively about water. And there is a, an increased awareness of how water, uh, the importance of water, how we, water is important for life. Now, uh, the topic of food security and, and water um, is very close to everybody's heart and very close to our heart, uh, Nestle, uh, a food company. And um, we have seen an increased tension, an increased tension between food and uh, demand and food supply. And we have had that several times in history already. You may remember the 1960s, uh, when uh, then the Green Revolution helped us out there, the Club of Rome and all that. But, but we have it again. And, uh, and we have it again very intensively. And what's happening today, it is more globalized and more intense and shorter in time framing. And we have seen uh, uh, that uh, tension between demand and supply um, in two dimensions. First, the underlying trend which is structural, but also then the shorter dimensions of volatility of prices. And uh, so there is drove, and, and there is temporary reasons for that, but there's definitely an underlying structural dimension. And that is between, uh, and we speak about 9 billion uh, people eating more and better, and we see also then also the agriculture that didn't get the right, uh, the right uh, I would say, attention. And that is then linked again with the agriculture produce prices that over the last 50 years, have come, been going down, has reduced, and by, by that decrease, also the interest of that activity. R&D investment in agriculture has actually been 1.5% of the worldwide R&D spend. 1.5% of all the spend that humanity does in R&D and research and development, only 1.5% 1, 1 is agriculture. That is going up now. And, and also what comes out then of that R&D is not even giving an honest chance. But these are the structural. Uh, what's also happening, there's a lot of misconceptions. And that's why I'm not going to give a, a whole uh, expose on food security and water per se. I just want to share with you three thoughts. And we have heard already, water has no value. And that's a very emotional thing, because you say water should have a price, and then you get into the human rights emotions. And, and it is a human right but it should have a value. It should be valued, and, and that's a big problem. Actually, um, the father of economy, Adam Smith, said sometimes, uh, some time ago, things with greatest value in use frequently have no value in exchange. And on the contrary, uh, things with a high value in exchange sometimes don't have even any value in use. Uh, let me explain. Water has actually not a lot of value in exchange, but has an extremely high value in use. Now, you think about diamonds, have an extremely high value in exchange. Are they useful? And that's a paradox. And that paradox has led to a massive overuse of fresh water. And we have seen many examples here already. And that environmental, because we still link it as environmental, and it is an environmental issue, has dramatic social impact and it's going to get to social unsustainability. So that's the first thought and actually uh, we talk about it um, and we heard about how that should put, be put in the econometrics of our economies and in the value of our produce. If we would do that, we would see major shifts of value in agriculture produce per se. First thought, valuing water. Are we uh, getting there? The other one is uh, the saving potential. And we heard already many examples of how, how, how easily, with not a lot of uh, monetary or money input, 
you can reduce dramatically, dramatically, uh, dramatically the water usage. Uh, and we saw the movie Taste the Waste. And there, a company like Nestle can have an influence upstream, beside in between their walls, and also downstream. Let me give you a few examples. First of all, we know that the physiological needs for what we produce, agriculture produce, the need for water is basically, I would say, 40% or half of what we do now with the technologies we have and the knowledge we have. So there's already, and we saw how in the Punjab, by no cost of having water, uh, over-pumping was one of these problems. So, and Nestle works uh, with farmers. Uh, for example, we have a Nescafe plan. We, coffee is a very important uh, raw material for us. And uh, we, 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 we have a research center in Tours in France where we, we look for plantlets that, uh, that are uh, much more and uh, drove resistant, uh, drought resistant. And, and, and then we can produce them and multiply them in a very natural way. And then we, we can share them and, and give them to farmers, coffee farmers. I was over two weeks ago, three weeks ago in Kenya, where we have one of these uh, uh, farmers uh, experimenting with uh, and working with us. And it is not only plantlets, it's also uh, some uh, lessons of good uh, farm husbandry and all. How somebody in the same square hectare or square meter can have three, four percent, uh, times, three, four times more produce, coffee produce of higher quality and less half uh, the usage of water. So we're not speaking about 5% increases and all that with the right uh, material, with the right education, with the right guidance and knowledge, you can really have a dramatic, a dramatic influence upstream in the, uh, as, a, as a company. Uh, we are uh, working in cooperation actually also with the International Water Management Institute and as uh, from 2007 we have uh, several projects. The first project was one on water usage and the small farming in the South Asian region and, and that was actually a project again with some small simple guidelines that we then share upstream with the farmers how dramatically impact you can have again on water usage and other things also, you speak about uh, uh, yields and, and, and quality on top of that. So this is, uh, has many, many collateral present benefits. We do have as a company 1,200 agronomes, agronomes working with upstream farming uh, contacts that we do have. If we add that with all other people who are working in that upstream link of Nestle with farmers, we have something like close to 20,000 people working directly with farmers be it with corporations, with other institutes, and so on. We do have contact with 650,000 farmers directly that we are uh, uh, working with day in, day out. And, and, and if we do it indirectly through our suppliers where we have, then also uh, through collaboration uh, an impact on millions of farmers, that uh, can have an impact. Uh, other water saving um, uh, that we can uh, uh, really dominate very, very directly is how we use water inside our walls. We have 460 factories in the world, and if we have the same guidelines and the same, I would say, inspiration and best practice of water usage, you can lower dramatically your water uh, uh, usage as a company overall. We have lowered, for example, our water usage uh, over the last 10 years per, say, dollar sold we have lowered that from 4.5 liters to 1.5 liters. Uh, so for $1 sold equivalent, we are more or less one third of water usage that we had 10 years ago. And that is, first of all, awareness again, focus on it. It's not only investment, but it, uh, it is really a simple things, but it just, I do believe, discipline and sharing that knowledge to all our, our factories. Um, also wastewater, uh, we had actually our first wa wastewater plant uh, not even in Europe, it was in, in Brazil, and that was in the early 1930s. And uh, no law was there saying you had to have wastewater plants, but we had it because, again, there was a, a mutual interest of uh, not putting the bad water into the river that was actually feeding out the cows that were feeding the, or giving us the milk. So you see there is always this in there, win-win dimensions. Uh, then also reducing, and we have seen it, uh, reducing um, the losses in the supply chain. And there's two dimensions, again, upstream, uh, for example, milk. I think it's the uh, FAO has calculated that from the fresh milk, 16 to 28% of the fresh milk produced is not getting anywhere, is lost in the, in, in before it gets to the table. And uh, if by working with the, our milk districts, 
with the farmers directly, we can bring that waste uh, down to 0.6%. But that's an equivalent of 1.4 uh, or 1,400 million square uh, cubic meters of water equivalent. Now, if you think then, 1,400 uh, 1, uh, million, that we as a company in general, uh, globally, are taking up uh, 140 million square uh, uh, meters, basically by only reducing uh, the waste and the intake of fresh milk, actually we save 10 times more water than we actually use as a whole company worldwide in our factories. These are the dimensions of uh, waste reduction that you can get. Other waste reductions and, and is, is then downstream, the link with our uh, retailers. And actually through the Consumer Goods Forum, where we have, uh, where we are sitting together, manufacturers and retailers, we can work together, and that's one of the programs we have. How can we drive out waste between us? And uh, th th there again, uh, we saw it. One third, uh, minimum one third, of all what is produced is not used. Um, and it, the irony is, up in the developing world, upstream is in the fields because the farmer doesn't get it to uh, the market, and in our world, and basically. That's where the biggest retailers are. It is lost between the retailing and, and the consumer, and then the consumer in the kitchen. There again, working uh, with uh, our partners downstream, we can reduce dramatically also again the waste. And guess what? It makes economical sense. Reducing waste is, is something we should care for only, only for economical reasons. The same with water upstream. The third thought is partnerships. This is a huge problem. Um, this is a complex problem. And, 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 and we are a sizable company. We are uh, quite visible. Um, but we only 1.5% uh, maximum, a fraction of the industrialized food chain. So there is many other players. And the examples that I give for Nestle, there's so many other companies that do have the same example. And I do believe that there is an alignment, an increased alignment with all companies. And we're talking about these things in our Consumer Goods Forum, for example. The awareness, and but also, indeed, very firm action behind uh, uh, their activities. And again, it is uh, concentric circles. It's in between your walls and then upstream and downstream. The effect that that can have is tremendous. First, so multiplying uh, uh, private initiatives uh, through um, uh, the whole industrial activity and manufacturers and retailers do have an impact. Uh, then second, again, um, uh, we, and we, uh, we are working with, with groups like Water Resource Group or uh, where we are analyzing the watersheds because water is a local issue specifically. We can speak globally, abstract terms, but at the end of the day, it's very, very tangible locally. The analysis, analysis of the watersheds and how then also governments, local governments, national governments, uh, private initiative, NGOs are there then working together for very specific solutions in each watershed, which is actually not only over uh, everywhere the same. It's one of these good examples. The importance here of the, as I said, I mentioned before, the Stockholm Wall World Water um, uh, Week, where uh, awareness, in my eyes, and, and mutual societal awareness from all partners, be it governments, be it NGOs, be it civil uh, uh, society and, and companies, is, is, is extremely important. Um, so, in other words, um, there's so much that can be done, uh, and, and the impacts are tremendous. Uh, they are tremendous. I do believe that sometimes, too, um, uh, uh, politics should also speak more uh, frankly and openly about all, the, all these issues. I just mentioned one thing, biofuels. Biofuels is a well-intentioned uh, aberration. Uh, if you go for emitting corn into your tank, um, I mean, it is well-intentioned. And that's why our position as a company is no food for fuel. We're not against biofuel, per se, but we are against making, uh, putting food into a tank. And although that's well-intentioned, and that was well-mentioned, and the, the, the information was not there at the time, maybe, the information is now there, that it doesn't make even sense on the environmental issues, then there should be a political leadership and stop it. And we're not there yet. Uh, there is so much emotion when you speak about water in general, and the emotions are important, but the facts should prevail. And do the facts get an honest chance? I question it. If we all care about life, we should care about water, and that's what we do. Thank you very much.